Well, hello. I've been looking forward to this month as part of the campaign of Champions for the Broken Hearted that Life Without Limbs has been doing in 2022 for me to talk about disabilities. Woo! I, I, I love that we were able to talk with John Erickson Tata, Bethany Hamilton, incredible inspirations uh, for the world to see that um, when you have a disability, um, I love this one, when you spell out uh, disabled, D-I-S-A-B-L-E-D, and you put a go in front of that, it spells God is abled. Um, it, it's understanding that we all have a disability um, of the heart. We all have struggles in our ups and downs of life, uh, but also to understand the differentiation of, of understanding that it's not about comparing each other's brokennesses that or brokenness that helps us to say, okay, well, at least I'm not suffering as bad as someone else. That There's no hope there. But it's understanding that when we are disabled and we're stopped in our tracks uh, and feeling like there is no hope for us, when you walk by faith and not by sight and you go, that's when God can take over, who could truly uh, bless you. He has truly blessed my socks up. Ha, ha, ha. But look at Johnny and Bethany, right? Uh, we also understand that they did have an accident. They were not born with their disability. We also understand that many people were born with different disabilities. Uh, there's a huge distinction um, between uh, a, a physical uh, versus a, an intellectual handicap. I, I want you to know that um, when I was talking with my parents and talking about what is a disability, why am I different? Um, I quickly understood, even in the special needs unit at my public school, uh, as I was becoming more mature, that everyone has different um, abilities or limitations in some aspects where they can't even talk um, and they maybe may not even understand how to hold a, a full conversation. Well, one of my favorite inspirations of all uh, is Gary Phelps. And uh, there's a coffee company called Storyville Coffee. And his quote is up on that wall. And he simply says, love everybody and never, ever hurt anybody. And when you look at Gary Phelps, who has Down syndrome and the simplicity of his joy in knowing that every day is a gift, seizing each moment, um, understanding that heaven is uh, a day closer as the sun goes down daily. Um, I need sometimes pick me up moments from Gary. And so I call his mom and dad and get to talk to him and he gets to talk to my kids. And I just want you to know that, that whether it's uh, cerebral palsy or other, um, many other different uh, disabilities out there, uh, I, I'm not a person to come and tell someone what's more difficult, but I am going to say this. Um, being born without limbs has been difficult, um, but I can't imagine having um, other brokennesses in, in, in all, even your life. Maybe you don't even have a disability, but you know how it feels to go through life feeling like maybe um, you've been isolated or abandoned by your own mother and father. Um, being in a broken home, I think, is worse than having a disability. So the, it's, it's all about the brokenhearted status of our heart and how God is our hope, that he can take our broken pieces and do something beautiful. You know, when I, I look at my disability in the mirror of my body, having no arms and no legs, uh, I remember when I was six years old, I, I would try to hold on to the fact, well, at least I have, you know, beautiful eyes. I have good looking eyes and maybe they're going to tease me for how I look on the outside having no limbs. But when I look myself in the eyes, I'm like, I'm, I'm still pretty good looking, right? And my parents always said, look, don't, don't look at the negative things that you don't have. Be thankful for what you do have. And, and I, I'm like, that, that's easy for you to say because you have arms and legs, right? And so at the same breath, my parents are saying, well, you know, 
God has a plan for you. I knew about Jeremiah 29 verse 11, about God having a, a hope, plan, and a future for me. I knew that God could also heal. I knew that he could do anything. He could raise people from the dead. And so I prayed for many, many nights as a child, asking God for arms and legs. I heard about, it was at Wigglesworth, I think, um, who had stumped legs, put shoes on the ends of his uh, uh, um, stumped legs. And when he woke up, he had full legs. I heard about those stories and I saw the miracles in the Bible. And I'm like, well, where's my miracle? And I was praying and praying. And, you know, sometimes we pray for things to, to change. And there's nothing wrong with asking God for arms and legs. My friends, I have a pair of shoes in my closet in case God gives me arms and legs. It would be so cool that all of a sudden, you know, this roof opens up and the glory of the Lord opens up and the angels sing, and bang, I have arms and legs supernaturally. That would be the coolest day, right? I mean, it would be amazing. And then all the people that have known me without arms and legs, including Oprah Winfrey herself, should be saying, hey, come back on my show and tell us about God. I mean, that would be so cool. Did it happen yet? No. Do I know if God's going to give me arms and legs here on earth? No, I don't know. Am I still praying for arms and legs? Yes. Does he already know my faith even before I bought a pair of shoes? Yes. Does he hear every prayer and see every tear? Yes. Does he have compassion on me? Yes. He does. And he loves me. And he loves that I'm a child of his. Without seeing him, my heavenly father, I believe in the promises of God. That despite what I feel, despite what I see, despite what I know here on earth, I know that I can hold on to his promises, that all things do come together for the good for those who love him. And that even when I don't get a miracle, I can still be a miracle for someone else. I mean, how cool would it be if God gave me arms and legs at age eight, right? Uh, that would be amazing. But would you have known about that news story from Australia? And even if you saw about an Australian boy being born without limbs, now miraculously given arms and legs by God, so he claims, will that really change your life? Go to YouTube and watch miracles. Will it really change your life? That would have been the same impact that I would have had as a, 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 a child with a miracle happening because it doesn't change you. But when now this young man without limbs, who's blessed to stand in front of the gates of hell and redirect traffic, and without limbs radiating the joy, peace, and strength, and a surety that he has in his own heart that Jesus is Lord, that's the confidence, that's the hope that everyone with arms and legs is looking for. For the greatest disability of all is a disability of the soul because of sin. And everyone's looking for hope. Everyone's looking for purpose. But when someone sees this limbless man talking about joy and purpose and strength beyond his disability, that he's more than a conqueror, what does that mean? That I didn't need to be given arms and legs to conquer the real disabilities of life. I am victorious without arms and legs. You can see that I'm complete. You can see that I'm whole. You can see that I'm not lacking a single thing because my father in heaven owns everything. I'm not disabled. I am more than able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my ability because of the Jesus that lives in me. And when you understand the miracles and prayer life and going step by step, the greatest miracle of all is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you are complete in him as an adopted child, if you have arms and legs and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you've also become adopted into the Heavenly Father's family, I'm your half-brother. No, I'm just joking. But what I want you to understand is that now I have a new identity. I am a new person. I'm renewed in my mind. That when challenges come, whether it's a physical disability, whether it's circumstances, um, whether it's family members, fa uh, friends, or 
traffic on the freeway. Whatever that, you know, like pushes your buttons today, and that might be smaller or larger circumstances, we can find victory in Jesus Christ as we walk with him and talk with him and read the word over our life in a personal daily relationship with him. So much so that my joy is in the Lord. Whether I have arms and legs, I will believe in him that he died for me and rose again. And that's where my treasure is. Arms and legs are just going to give me arthritis later on anyway, right? Like we've got to understand. It's not about the circumstances, but does God heal? Yes. Have I seen miracles? Yes. I want you to know I've seen miracles with my own eyes. In fact, I've got a medical doctor saying that in my own spine, uh, verified by two other doctors, that I had a rare condition in my spine, the tethering of my spine, where the spine turns into fluid. It's irreversible. You can only be born with this thing. It's called um, a syrinx. And I actually saw over the years, God close up those holes. And so did the doctors seeing the MRIs. And they said, we don't know how this is possible. And I said, I do. I've seen miracles. Yes, I've seen the dark side as well. I've seen demons, not just in Africa, but walking through the wall of my hotel room in San, in, in, in San Francisco. I want you to know that the spiritual realm is real. And there is that understanding that when you pray, angels fight those spiritual war battles that we cannot. But when we come to him as an adopted child of God, he does hear our prayers. He does see our tears. And, and when I was praying for arms and legs and he, he, he didn't say yes. Could it be maybe later? Yeah. But my peace is not waiting on God to answer my prayer. God is not a genie. Oh, God, I I give to the church. I'm a Christian. Um, I'm a good person. Where are you? God, give me this. Give me that. Oh, you just got to believe. You need more faith. Don't believe in that. The the, the scripture says very clearly that uh, you only need faith of a mustard seed to move mountains. If the the church or someone's telling you, well, you know, you need to just believe more. You lack faith. That is not true. Or you need to give more to the church. That is not true. Oh, God just punishing you because of your sin. No, that's not true because the Bible says that the wage of sin is death. So if he's actually punishing me for my sin, then I should be dead already, right? And so we need to know the Bible. And I'm so thankful today that I know the Bible. And I want you to know the Bible. Why? Because that's what gives me the faith and understanding that when I don't get a miracle, I can still be one. And I'm so thankful that if God gives me a life here that remains limbless and I go to heaven on the other side, meeting just this little boy, Daniel Martinez who I met when I was 24 years old, love sharing this story. He was in the crowd as I was speaking to the church. And I saw him held up above everyone else. And someone brought him up on stage and he's sitting next to me. So cute, 19 months old. And I had flashbacks of when I was a kid. It was so surreal going through my childhood, my bullying, my attempted suicide at age 10. Like like it was just flash right in front of me all at once. And I saw him and I saw his little foot and I put my little foot on his foot and he smiled and everyone cried. And I thought, God, if I was born this way and you did not say yes to my desire to have limbs miraculously, just so I can help this young boy know that it's going to be okay. Thank you. His mom came up and cried and said, thank you for being our miracle. What do you think I said? Oh, you're welcome. This was part of my plan the whole time. No, all credit goes to God who had that in mind even before the earth began. I want you to know that I'm going to get a new body. 
in heaven, I'm going to have, let's pretend, arms and legs. So, well, Daniel, I can just imagine us hugging each other and weeping. And Daniel saying, thank you, brother, for helping me believe that this place called heaven was real. I remember when I was going to school and I wished that another limbless person was at that school and maybe even speak to all of them and tell them to stop bullying me. Well, I didn't get that miracle, but I became that miracle for Daniel. And he became the coolest kid in the school. My parents, they wish they had a miracle to meet another set of parents with a child in the same condition as their child. They never got that, but they became that miracle to help others along the way. I want you to know that more than enjoying this life and existing and experiencing and coexisting is to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to know that he has a plan. And I gave my life to Jesus at age 15, reading John chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, and I want to read it for you. It says, as he went along, Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. What was really amazing was, again, you see those questions, right? Was it because of his sin that he's now disabled? What? What? what reincarnation? I want you to know there are reasons why I don't believe in reincarnation. There's reasons why I, I am not an atheist or Islam or Hindu um, or Shinto. When you look at all these religions and you put me in some of those religions, um, there are many reasons why um, I believe as Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. But when you understand that there are still people today who believe in reincarnation and being punished for their previous life, I want you to know it's not a new thought. This is thousands of years ago. These people were asking Jesus Christ the same thing. Or was it that God punished the parents for their sin? No. What was so cool, hear me, friends, this is the coolest part. The reason why I gave my life to Jesus when I read this is as you read on, Jesus spits in the dirt and puts that dirt, wet dirt, clay, whatever you want to say, mud, on the blind man's face without saying a word to the blind man, without the blind man asking a single question. Now, if I'm blind and someone's putting something on my face and I don't even know who they are and I'm hearing this conversation going on and then someone's putting mud on my face, giving me a facial without my permission, I'm going to say, hey, whoa, 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 time out. Who are you? What do you want? What is this? Tell me what you're about to do and then I'll let you know if I trust you, right? That's the whole thing. Isn't that our greatest disability of all? Because we don't see the incredible plan that God had for a limbless man, that what the enemy tried to use for bad, God can turn into good, so good that he sent this limbless evangelist to 74 countries, two dozen presidents, and being on television to preach the gospel to 733 million people by the age of 39? If we knew the plan, oh, well, that makes sense. Let's just go. Thank you, God. But if we knew the plan, where would we need faith? You see, we've got it backwards, my friends. It's the, it's the epiphany of a faith journey with Jesus Christ. It's the pinnacle experience of following the unseen God. Where he looks down and he smiles that when us as his children are in pain, are feeling alone, when we feel isolated and even abandoned and even Hatred towards God stirs up in our heart because he doesn't make sense why he doesn't change things. He still says, trust me. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust me with all your heart, trust in, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not upon your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. What does that mean? Trusting in him. The blind man trusted the rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth. 
who was more than just a rabbi. He was called rabbi by those who thought he was just a teacher. Jesus was God in the flesh. And the blind man didn't stop Jesus' plan to be fulfilled. That's the question I ask you. Will you ask God to still your heart so that you can be still and know that I am God? To understand that if he gave you the plan, then there's no room for faith in action. And when you don't see, but you take that step by faith, it's so pleasing to God as he sees us as his children saying, Daddy, we don't understand. I don't understand. And I don't know what you have for me, but I trust you. And I'm going to thank you and I'm going to praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And you have more precious thoughts of me than all the grains of sand in the world. And you form me in my mother's womb. And you're with me and you'll never leave me. You'll always give me what I need. My friends, God may not always give you what you want and what makes sense to you, but he'll always give you what you need. That's the God I have confidence in. That's the rock that I can stand upon. And when the world says I'm not good enough, I'll get a second opinion. I'll go back to what my Father in heaven says. And, oh, what's my purpose? Who better to tell you your purpose than the one who designed you? Well, what if this doesn't happen? What if this doesn't happen? Pray. And for as long as your heart desires to keep on praying for things that you desire, keep on praying it. But understand that his plan is always what you want more than your plan. His strength is always going to be what you need more than your strength. His thoughts and plans are way higher than ours. And what really hit me reading John chapter 9 was the faith of the blind man. Without question, he allowed Jesus to heal him. And I realized God. I don't need to know your plan. I don't need to know what's ahead. I just need to know that I need Jesus. I need him to rescue my soul more than giving me arms and legs. To give me eternal life. To give me joy more than arms and legs. You know how many people I've met with arms and legs and they're not happy. And then they're praying for what they want. Then they get what they want and then they're still not happy. (laughs) You know those kind of people? That's the disability of being a human being. It's never enough. Do you have all you really need? It's Jesus. He's the only one to satisfy. And at age 15, I said, God, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I know I'll never be perfect. And I know I look very different from everybody else. And I know I'm going to be bullied if you don't change this. And I know that I'm going to have fears of never getting married. I know that I have a lot of fears ahead. But I want to trust you. Forgive me. I believe, Jesus, that you rose again. Out of that grave. Sin and death is what you conquered. Arms and legs or not. I want to spend eternity in heaven. Arms and legs or not here on earth, it doesn't matter. To the point that I have faith that if I was diagnosed with cancer tomorrow, like my dad was at one stage, the doctor says I have weeks to live. I pray for a miracle. We'd pray for a miracle as we prayed for my dad. Did he die of cancer? Yeah, Christians die of cancer. But we know his soul is living forever because he believed in Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We can pray for miracles, but know that all we need is him. That's the hope. That's the strength. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. You've got a disability. You feel like maybe you're a burden to your parents. Maybe you're watching this because your child is the one that has the disability. Maybe it's your sibling that is almost feeling like they've taken the entire spotlight. And they've all forgotten you. 
then even you have your complicated questions as to why God hasn't healed your sibling. I have a cousin who told me outright, I don't believe in a loving God because of your disability. I want you to know that God didn't bring this pain and suffering and disabilities and death. Sin did. They ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve. And from then on, humankind was cursed with death, sickness, disease, pain. It's all in the Bible, but only a temporary life. We would then choose to believe, yes, God, despite what I feel, despite what I know, despite what I see right now, here in the physical, here on earth, I'm going to look beyond my needs physically and meet every need in my life, God, because of my faith in you. That's the bridge. That's the hope. So please don't give up. Please don't give up. If you're watching this and you know someone or, or someone's family that's affected with disabilities, pass this on to let them know that hope is still for them because of Jesus. I love you, and I just want to say a prayer for you right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that you love us, that you have a plan for us, that what the enemy tried to use for bad, you can turn into good. God, we pray for miracles right now. We pray for arms and legs to grow right now. And any other physical ailment or disability or intellectual disability, Lord Jesus, we pray for full healing right now. But God, if you do not change our physical chemistry, our bodies, we ask God that you would change our heart and give us faith to trust in you that your grace is sufficient, that you do have a plan for everyone. And God, maybe there are some questions that we may not know the answer to until we see you face to face. But God, we thank you that we can hold on to you, knowing that you'll even carry us when we cannot walk. We ask God that you bless everyone right now watching and help us to know that we can become more than conquerors, that even without a disability that's miraculously healed. If, even if that doesn't happen, we know the greatest miraculous power of being redeemed because of the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you would give us faith to pray, faith to accept whatever plan you have, but also faith to believe what the Bible says as we read it and walk in a personal daily relationship with you. We thank you and we thank you, God, for this moment. Heal our hearts. You know our depression. You know some of us are addicted to different things just to escape the pain that we feel. Some of us are mean to other people because we feel like the, the world owes us something. God, sometimes we feel like a burden to our, our families and sometimes we look at our future and it doesn't look so good. But God, we thank you that you do have a mighty plan. So help us to walk with you, talk with you, teach us how to pray, and to trust in you every single day. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Love you.